Hi, I'm Glenn Jewis, and welcome to episode five of my video podcast. Okay, so for this episode, I'm gonna change things around just a little bit, because I'm gonna kick off with a Photoshop technique, and then for the Lightroom side of things, I'm gonna hand over to my friend Serge Ramelli, who's a French landscape photographer from Paris. And he's gonna take you through, in about six or seven minutes, how he retouches a landscape picture using purely Lightroom, and the results are absolutely fantastic. So once we've gone through this first Photoshop technique, I'll hand over to Serge. But for my first part, what I wanted to do was answer a question that I get asked a lot, and that is how do I create that cartoon kind of painterly look to my pictures? Because it's a technique that I tend to use maybe on 99.9% .9 of the pictures that I do to some degree or another. So seeing as I get asked so many questions about it, I thought, well, now's the time to get it out there and answer it for you. Now, the technique I use is not one that I originally came up with, or the first part isn't anyway. I learned the first part of this from a uh, German retoucher, Calvin Hollywood, and it's a technique that he uses called the painterly effect. And then I've added my own little bit towards it at the end as well, because you see, that's the great thing about Photoshop is we can learn from so many different people, but because of our own tastes, our own experiences, and what we like to do, we can then tweak those little techniques that we learn to change it to give the fun look that we want. And that's what I really like about Photoshop. So here's the technique then. I'll show you how Calvin does his, first of all, his painterly technique, and then I'll show you how I do my little bit at the end. So what we need to do here, we're gonna use this picture here. This is one uh, of a bodybuilder called um, Mehmet that I know here in uh, the UK, bodybuilder from London. And I'm gonna apply this technique to this picture here now. So obviously this picture is, is a composite, it's been kind of put together. And this is, the stage right now is the very, very end of the retouch. And that's generally when I apply this painterly effect. So here's what we do. We create two copies of our picture. And the first copy I'm gonna call cartoon. And the second copy I'm gonna call sharpness. And I'm gonna turn off the sharpness, because first of all, I want to give the skin and the look to that picture, that kind of painterly cartoon effect. So what I'm gonna do now, then I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, and I'm gonna filter, and obviously, because we're using filters, good practice is I'm gonna to convert to a smart filter. It's just good practice, so I can go in and make some changes later. So then I'm gonna to go to filter, noise, and reduce noise. Now, a lot of people tend to think to get this effect, there's some kind of special plugin which I've found, and, but it, it's not. It's literally using what's already in Photoshop. And this is going back loads of versions because reduced noise has been in Photoshop for quite some time now. So when we bring up the reduced noise filter, we've got some settings, some sliders in here. And all we need to do in here is get the strength and turn that up to 10. Everything else is gonna go to zero. And you'll see when we get click in this little preview box here, we can click down and then release to see the kind of look that's given. So already when I sort of release it, you can see that the skin is getting that kind of, almost like a waxy feel, I guess, to it, you'd say. So I'm gonna click OK. Now what I tend to do when I do this technique is I don't just apply it once, I tend to apply it twice. So I'm now gonna go to Filter, Noise, and Reduce Noise. Now you would ordinarily think that when you've applied a filter, all you need to do is press Command or Control F to reapply it, or at the filter menu at the top there, the last one you use is right at the top of the menu. But because I'm gonna come in and do this one again, I don't want to apply the exact same settings. I'm gonna bring this down to maybe around about four or five, and we'll go for five. So again, I can click down in the middle of preview here, on and off like so, and then click OK. So that's the kind of waxy, painterly, cartoon kind of look to the skin and everything else to be honest in the picture. But the only problem with that is, is when we turn that on and off, what we notice is that we lose sharpness in the areas that we want to have it. So like on the glasses, on his beard, and certainly on the guns and stuff like that, we tend to lose a lot of the sharpness. So the way we bring that back is we now turn on our sharpness layer. And all we do is go to filter and other and high pass. And this is a, a high res picture, but I'm only gonna use a one radius on the pixels here. So 1.0, click OK, and then change the blend mode here to overlay. Now that doesn't bring back all the sharpness, because obviously we wouldn't wanna lose that kind of waxy feel. But what it does is actually start to bring back a little bit in the most important areas. So now if I turn this on and off, 
you'll start to see it certainly on the guns. You can see that there's a lot of that sharpness has been brought back there. But also the skin and this kind of nice jacket that he's got here, it's retaining that cartoon look. So it kind of brings it back a little bit, gives us that cartoon look, but doesn't get rid of all the sharpness. So that's as far as I would have normally taken it with the technique that I learned from, uh, from Calvin. But one thing I like to do is, because I tend to think that, if I just, in fact, I'm just going to put these two layers into a group. Typical Virgo, keeping things nice and tidy, and I'll call that cartoon look. I tend to think that for my own images, this makes it look just a little bit flat. It needs a little bit more contrast. So what I do at this stage is a favorite technique for adding contrast of mine. And it's, I first of all add a combined layer by, add, by pressing down Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E. And that gives me a stamped or a merged layer at the very, very top of my layer stack. Then I'm going to come in and go Filter, Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. And this gives me like a localized kind of contrast without giving me any kind of color shift or any kind of halo so long as I don't go too high with the settings and for something like this I'm going to keep the amount around about 25 and the radius at about 25 as well threshold straight back down to zero so what this does now is if I turn it on and off you can see that it gives it just a little bit more of a lift certainly if you look at the guns now just a little bit more contrast in it if you turn that so it's after so it could be before after before after and then just click OK. And that is it. That is all there is to the cartoon or painterly effect. Calvin Hollywood's technique that I learned and just a little bit on the end there to add a little bit of uh, contrast in using the unsharp mask. Right, that's the first Photoshop technique. Let's now hand over to Serge for an absolutely cracking landscape retouch using only Lightroom. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, you're watching Glenn Dewey's podcast. But my name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France. I'm a friend of Glenn, and um, I'm going to show you a bit what I do, and I will show what Glenn is doing to my friends in France and with anybody who's following my podcast. What I do in France is mostly urban landscape, as you can see some of my work here. I try to shoot Paris when there are some very interesting skies, you know, clouds, or I try to do lone exposure shots or artistic black and white. And I have this podcast going. I have done over 40 episodes on it. Basically, the whole idea of that podcast is that I take one photo from start to finish and I show you my whole workflow on it. So I've done this for over 40 photos now. And uh, you can subscribe to my podcast on pushing that button here. Thank you very much. And I hope you handle this tutorial that I'm going to show you now, which is the type of work that I do. All right, so here is the tip for this week. This is a photo taken in Venice, Italy, and um, I put the metadata up there, so you can see I shot this at one two hundredth of a second at f9. Now, and ISO 100. There was a, the sun was coming straight into the camera, and the reason I shot this as one two hundred and second and f9 is that I was trying to get a high speed because you see there is boats coming, so I wanted to freeze the action. Uh, so one two hundredth of a second seemed to be fast enough. And um, F9, I have this pole here right in front of me. So I needed a big depth of field so that everything was in focus. If I would have gone to F10, F11 or F12, I would have uh, a slower shutter speed or I would have to increase my ISO, and which is something I don't like. Why I don't like to increase the ISO? Because this is a very constructive scene. If you look at it, the sun, is right into the camera, is really, uh, you know, very present here. So this is very, uh, almost looks like it's burned, and this is very dark. So, you know, it's backlit, we are right into the sun. And so I needed to um, do a little exposure compensation. Basically, I shot this a little darker than I should, than what the, the camera gave me as settings. Because I wanted to do what I'm gonna show you now, uh, which is a technique of shooting into the sun. Basically, what you do is you go a bit dark, you know, you you underexpose a bit the photo. And even with underexposing the photo, look how bright the sky is. So let me show you the retouching. So I'm going to right click and do a virtual copy. Okay, now I have a virtual copy so I can show you really the before and after. I'm in the develop module and here I go. So I'm going to take my highlights and bring it down the whole way down to minus 100. So we start seeing the sun. 
And then I'm going to bring up the shadows uh, completely. So now we see what's going on in the shadows. And you see, if, I, if my ISO would be over 100, like 200, 300, because it is underexposed, I would have quite some noise in the shadows, and I don't want that. That is why I should I choose F9, because that was the maximum uh, aperture I could have without boosting the ISO. Next is, we're going to change, maybe I'm not going to boost up the shadows that much for now. Uh, next, we are going to change completely the white balance. The reason is, when the sun is coming down straight into your camera, generally the sky is very yellow, which was kind of the case, but I was on automatic white balance, and so it did a pretty blue white balance, which was not the feeling I had. So let's boost the temperature the whole way to the right to make this whole thing yellow. Uh, that looked more what I saw at the time, and let's add a little bit of magenta to add a bit of red. Okay, now we're getting there. This is a bit more the atmosphere I was going for. See how we got all these details back with Lightroom 4 because I shot RAW and I underexposed a little bit. It's quite amazing. Let's go further and let's get some more of this guy with adding a neutral density filter. Um, I'm going to go for exposure. I'm going to minus the exposure about one stop. And I'm going to make the ND filter just on the, uh, on the sky here. It's maybe a bit strong, so I'm going to back it down to about half a stop. Okay, but now the sky is better. I'm going to boost the contrast just in the sky. And I'm going to boost a bit of saturation, maybe in the sky. Oh, no, not, not the saturation, because I'm going to do an overall saturation later on. But I'm going to boost the clarity a little bit, so we see more what's happening in the sky. Now, what a change, you see? Before, after. Okay, now I'm going to press the Alt key. And I'm going to do my whites and blacks. So pressing down the Alt key or Option key on the Mac, I'm going right with the whites until I see some whites, a lot of white pixel, which means here, this is a sun you can see here, the, 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 the white circle. So I'm going to back it down a little bit. But that's what happens when you press Alt. The whole picture goes black. And then you can go to the right until you see some pixels and you know you have reached what we call a white point. Then let's do the same thing with the blacks. I'm going to take my blacks, hold on the Alt key, go left until I see some pixels. OK, and and drop it. OK, now we have a lot more better contrast. And all I'm going to do now is boost up a bit the contrast and maybe add a slightly bit of exposure. And uh, let me press I to take out the metadata. OK, now this is the look I was going for. You see how we went from this, which is the original photo, to this, which is uh, much more what I had at the time. Now, let's just continue a little bit and let's just add some highlights post cropping. Uh, maybe not that much, uh, something like minus nine or something, just a little bit, you know, to darken a bit the, uh, you know, the outside of the photo. And, um, Let's do uh, some lens correction profile. I'm going to enable the profile correction, which is like an automatic thing. OK, maybe when I do that, it takes out some of the vignetting. So I'm going to add some more vignetting. All right. OK, and one last thing, I'm just going to go into camera calibration to look how the uh, camera landscape calibration would look on that photo. I think it's going to be too much. No, I don't like it. It's too red. So I'm going to go back to uh, uh, standard Adobe standard okay so that's it that's basically the tip you know and uh, it's quite a change and I love this kind of photo you know when the Sun starts getting down it's not quite sunset yet but it gets all yellow in the sky and the trick is you shoot into the Sun you're underexposed you know with a with a very low ISO like 100 on Canon or 200 on Nikon and then you do this magic in Lightroom, and there you are. I show you again the before and after. That's the before, and that's the after. Okay, I kind of like that. So that was the tip of the week, guys. I hope you take some great photos, and I'll see you soon. All right, so rather than me now showing you a photography tip, what I want to do is just come back into Photoshop because there's one thing here I want to make you aware of. 
You see, I was going to go out and show a technique about how to capture textures, because I love using textures with my pictures, especially when putting in backgrounds like on the picture you can see now. Because this guy here, he was photographed purely against a, a grey seamless, which I use a lot, and then texture has been added to the background very quickly to give it the impression of being a wall. So I was going to show a technique for that. However, there's something I want to make you aware of, which you might not know about, um, if you're a member of the Creative Cloud and, you, and you're using Photoshop CC. And it's something called Adobe Exchange. Now Adobe Exchange, you'll access it by going to the window menu, extensions, and then you see Adobe Exchange. And you see it opens up on the right hand side here. Now, I tend to think of this as like the app store for Photoshop. You know, like we have our iPads and our Androids and we can go onto certain app stores and download these little applications that allow uh, uh, gadgets to do all kinds of different things. Well, Adobe Exchange is kind of similar to that because when I click on all, you can see that uh, the internet will bring up all these different little applications and there's loads of free ones here we can make use of. There's also paid stuff as well. Now, the reason I want to show you this was because one of the things in here that I'm really fond of is one that's called Adobe Paper Textures. And there's a few other little ones in here that allow you to have textures as well. Because what you can do now is you can, when you find one that you want, you can click on it and it will open up and give you like a description of what it is. And this one's a great one because it gives us paper textures we can use on our images. And then you can install it very, very easy by clicking on free and installing it. Once you've installed it, you then go to the window menu and you find it under the extensions tab just here. So you can see now it says Adobe Paper Texture Pro. Now if I click on that, I get a little box comes up here and there's lots and lots and lots of different textures. The kind of things that I would have gone out and originally photographed or maybe purchased and download off stock photography sites. And I can experiment with all these kind of things. But the great thing is at the top here, it says select blend mode. So I can kind of immediately choose a blend mode to see what that texture would look like when I apply it to my picture. Now again, it's all about experimentation. We had all these kind of textures, but you can have a lot of fun doing stuff with this. So let's just say I wanted to choose uh, maybe this one here. I've got my blend mode set to soft light within this little dialogue. Click on this uh, texture down here on the right hand side. Photoshop takes a second or two to apply it and then bang, it's in there. Now that's maybe not the perfect texture to use, I could maybe come in here and desaturate it for a start off and then just apply on the mask. I can paint it because it comes with a mask as well. I can then just get a normal brush. We don't want to have anything fancy like I've got at the minute. That was from doing some stuff the other night. So I'll just get a normal brush. And then I can maybe paint it off areas as well within the picture here. But it's just a very, very quick way that we can have access to textures. And I love this because... I'm all for saving money. And if we can get free applications within Photoshop, download textures that we can use on our unlimited amount of pictures, I think that can really add to our creativity so we can start adding our own stamp to our pictures and just build our library up. So that was just one extra little thing I wanted to show you about for this week. Okay, so thanks for tuning in to this particular episode. If there's any questions or comments you've got about anything at all that you've seen, by all means, just drop me a line to glynn at glynnjuice.com or leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, if there's any tips, tricks or techniques you'd like to see in future episodes, just drop me a line and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, though, a big thanks to my buddy Serge Romelli for doing a great tutorial. Make sure you do check him out. Go to his website and also subscribe to his podcast there, his weekly pod podcast. And also talking of subscribing, make sure you click on the subscribe button just at the top here so that you don't miss out on any future videos that I'm posting. Obviously the weekly videos and any other stuff that I do like behind the scenes and day-to-day -day type stuff. But for now, that's all I have for you. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.